Hello and welcome to another episode of Blue Alpine TV. In today's episode, we'll look at the FBI looking into more than 100 cryptocurrencies for illegal activities. We'll look into the Silk Road's founders Ross Ulbricht's uh, court case and we'll look into Binance maybe moving into fiat currency. But let's jump right into this first news story. We are talking about the FBI. The FBI is currently looking uh, into or has opened uh, more than 130 cases uh, in which they look um, closely to what exactly has, has happened. Uh, some uh, illegal activities such as drug sales, kidnapping, ransomware attacks and human trafficking um, are the cases and they are very tightly tied to um, cryptocurrency. So prob probably in these cases, cryptocurrency has been used in some kind of way. Um, if you remember, we looked at kind of uh, the, the, the connection of cryptocurrencies and illegal activities. And we found out that the illegal activities, well, I mean, the, the US dollar or the euro or, or whatever currency you want to use for illegal activities is still the most used currencies in the world. So uh, cryptocurrency is not making a majority of the illegal activities in the world. So that's still not the case. And if you look at the dark web where a lot of like illegal activity happens, um, you can see that most currencies are uh, actually not the ones you would expect. So it's actually not Bitcoin. Bitcoin has, has lost a lot of interest when it comes to that. It is more Litecoin and in some cases Monero as well. Now, in, in terms of um, FBI, it says here there are thousands of cases in the bureau. So it is a small sliver at this point. Looks like um, the FBI will open much, much more cases against uh, different cases, uh, such as like these illegal things that, that are happening and they are uh, or will be connected to cryptocurrency in some kind of way. Obviously, in this case, it, it kind of sounds like a very, very good news story. If you say, well, illegal activities, uh, FBI has a lot of uh, kind of cases against cryptocurrencies, if you will. But in the end, is it, it is actually cases against illegal activities where in some kind of form cryptocurrencies have been involved. Should you be worried? Uh, well, hopefully, if you didn't do anything illegal, you shouldn't be worried. But um, if you have used uh, anything in the dark web, then I would be a bit careful about these kinds of things. Now, next up, uh, kind of tying into the uh, judicial system, if you will, um, Silk Road's Ross Albrecht denied review of prison life sentence by Supreme Court. So Ross Albrecht has found that uh, the Silk Road a couple of years ago and there was a, a very crazy, I think even FBI um, a, a kind of uh, not attack, but F the FBI um, took Ross Albrecht and the whole site down. Essentially, uh, there are rumors or cases and in the case, it says that Ross Albrecht has actually um, hired hitmen to to kind of uh, kill certain people which is a lot of like a lot of drama, a lot of fake news, a lot of headlines are in these news stories. But what was quite uh, sad and interesting, if you think about it, is the Supreme Court of the United States has denied Ross Ulbricht a cert petition this morning after holding it pending Carpenter. This is a no on internet privacy in Ross's case. Uh, Albrecht had been arrested and sentenced to life in prison in 2015 for his involvement in the Silk Road marketplace, convicted of helping the distribution of drugs, computer hacking, fraud, money laundering and, and others. Now, um, what they are trying to do or, or actually the legal team behind Ross Albrecht is obviously to get him in front of a court and kind of uh, rehear the whole situation. Now, um, Ross Albrecht, especially uh, and, and the Silk Road was kind of the first case. So I do expect the US being very, very strict with these things. Um, first case against be it Bitcoin, first case against the dark web. So they kind of want to make, in my opinion, an exemplary um, case out of this situation. Could be that once the trend uh, goes more into the positive uh, mood and atmosphere when it comes to cryptocurrencies and all of these topics, that they will probably look into it again or uh, like a decision will change. But until then, I don't think a lot of things will change um, regarding this. It's a bit of a sad story if you think about it, because uh, the justice system should treat everyone the same way. And the question is, yeah, why didn't he kind of get another um, review of the prison life sentence? 
Next up, we have quite an interesting news story. We are talking about Binance. So Cointelegraph has done um, an interview, an exclusive interview with um, a co-founder of Binance, uh, Zhangpeng Chao, uh, CZ, uh, how he's called in the scene. And um, it says here, Binance is set to launch its first crypto fiat exchange. Now that sounds amazing in Uganda. Now that probably excludes a lot of you people. Um, so that's uh, kind of the new story. So it looks like there will be a new platform, it will be called Binance Uganda. It will be the company's first foray into fiat to crypto trading, supporting the Ugandan shilling alongside major cryptocurrency and is set to launch imminently. Um, so Zhang Beng Zhao is saying, we think that crypto has a very strong use case in less developed countries. There's more money to be made in a more developed, uh, made in a more developed country, but we want to distribute crypto to the rest of the world. Uganda is a really interesting situation. Only 11% of the population has bank accounts. It's both a challenge and an opportunity. So it may be easier to adopt cryptocurrency as a form of currency instead of trying to push for bank adoption. It's an interesting experiment. Africa's big market is, is a big market. That's why we are there, is he saying. Now, very, very interesting. Uh, if you would have asked me where exactly would Binance uh, set up shop next, I wouldn't have said uh, Uganda. I would have actually expected it to be Malta. Uh, a bunch of things. I think, first off, uh, if we look at the high picture, and I'm literally not trying to be very political here. But um, if you look at the foreign policy of China in the last couple of years, it has been very, very much focused on Africa. So they have been kind of building a certain amount of infrastructure in Africa and kind of do a, a lot of business deals without actually um, mixing up politics with it. If you compare that to the more, let's say, Western um, governments, it was always mixed with politics. So business and politics was usually very mixed. China is very business focused and not a lot of uh, like politics focused, if you will. Now, um, Binance is a Chinese company, technically, right? They have an, another uh, shop in Malta, and um, uh, but technically they are a Chinese company. So I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't want to start any rumors here, but I don't know. I don't know how close Binance is to the Chinese government. But in any case, it could very well be that that, for example, people in Binance have been introduced to people from Uganda because uh, Uganda has very good ties and connections to China. Now, this is kind of the, the big picture stuff. I'm not saying that this is the case, but I think it's quite important that we look at it from this perspective. Now, Jumping Chow, amazing guy, haven't met him, but um, I think it probably has certain ideals and certain ethics that he wants to kind of represent and create with Binance. So yeah, very possible that uh, he looked at uh, the world maps and looked at uh, Africa specifically and found that Uganda is kind of uh, perfect as a fiat currency to cryptocurrency um, exchange place. But at the same time, there must be kind of a business um, idea behind this. Now, um, definitely the 11% of the population that has bank accounts plays into this because that means 89% of Ugandan people uh, are probably using something like, uh, I think in, in Kenya uh, or parts of Africa, actually, there is a, a service called M-Pesa, which is a, a mobile application in order to, uh, that, that is mostly used to send around money. Now, for cryptocurrency, this is a huge space. Um, on, on one side, you have all the, uh, uh, for example, immigrants sending money to um, developing countries. So this is a huge sector of cryptocurrency where, uh, for example, Western Union should be really scared, in my opinion. But on the other side, you also have the kind of national or within Africa um, uh, payments that, that are that are happening, right? So M-Pesa is, is used mainly by African people and um, cryptocurrency could also eat into the market share of M-Pesa. So um, I think it's, it's a bunch of things. It could very well be that the connection maybe uh, have come through uh, anyone from China that, that was close to government, but then the business sense made a lot of sense because Uganda, I mean, 
and not that they're like super relaxed but in in um, Mal next to malta i think uganda is the only com uh, country that was actually actively um in talks with binance to do anything i think there is also certain support and all of these things so at the same time i believe that uganda probably gave them a lot of um maybe tax benefits or maybe other uh, uh, regulatory benefits that that binance can say well great we can try this out this fiat to crypto exchange in a, a country where we essentially can um, work with the government in some kind of way and uh, at the same time we can test the systems because uh, don't be fooled i mean the the the, the majority of the developed or, or industry uh, uh, developed countries actually also want a, a, a fiat to cryptocurrency exchange so it's very well possible that they are just trying it in uganda in order to move out to africa and then move to other parts of the world it says here um that since they did this is the kind of the, the first time that binance is touching um fiat currency that a lot of kyc and aml regulatory things will be in place and they will be super strict and um kind of uh, these things are being mentioned now there will be a full interview and uh, they will launch it on uh, their youtube channel uh, if it happens to to be available while i upload this video i will make sure to put this into the video description if not we can talk about it in the next couple of days and i will link it up then so quite an interesting story regarding binance i, I still think binance is definitely one of the most interesting companies in the crypto space with that guys we're already at the end of today's episode make sure to like this video subscribe to the channel subscribe to the podcast join the telegram channel i'll see you on the next one take care bye bye